Oh, is it nonsense time? I think it's nonsense time. We're going to be replacing the rear catalytic converter on a Subaru Forester today. But there is a reason why it failed, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. So stay tuned so you don't have to do this again. If you've been following this saga for some time, then you know I've been trying to repair my Subaru for about three months now. What I first thought was an, was an MAF to maybe an ignition coil pack turned out to be a clogged catalytic converter. Sounds like ass because I removed the downstream oxygen sensor. So before I dive into the root cause, let's talk turkey. Handbrake up, put it in gear. I put it up on ramps, but you can lift the car. And of course, chalk your wheels. Because getting killed by an $800 shoe is whack. Before I fixed it, I removed the O2 sensor just to make this thing drivable. Anyways, you're gonna have to remove the undercover plate, this plastic piece under the car to get access to the exhaust. It's four 12 millimeter bolts. And four plastic clips. You just pull up on them and you remove them. And just for a better idea, this is the part of the exhaust that I'm replacing. It's the downstream catalytic converter. And we find that it is attached in three places. So one of them is right here, and you got three panes in the ass down the front by the manifold. Then in the middle, it hangs off, just one 14 millimeter bolt, and then these two panes in the ass attaching it to the rear muffler. And those are also 14 millimeter bolts. We'll get to those a bit later. Your pains per ass will vary, and and that's simply going to be a function of whether this exhaust was ever removed before, how long it's been sitting there, and how rusty it is. For me, this rust penetrant spray is sufficient because I've already done this job. Oh, hey there. And there it is. So 14 millimeter bolts um, on the front coming off the manifold. For this top one right here, this one's a pain in the butt. You'll need a flexible socket or a shallow socket to reach it. So you'll be struggling with that one for a while. So patience. Patience with this one. There is a good chance you'll just have to wind up cutting these with an angle grinder. But because I've already done this job, this wasn't so bad for me. It's a 14 millimeter bolt. Recording's hard. 14 millimeter bolt with a 12 millimeter nut behind it. So you'll be using a socket and a wrench. And in the middle here, one 14 millimeter bolt and it pops off of that hanger. And so here it is. Here's the old one removed and do remember that there is a gasket coming off of the exhaust manifold here. I'm gonna keep my old one. It's fairly new. So just what the hell is going on in here? Why is it clogged? As I'm beating it, what it looked like charcoal briquettes are falling right out of it and they were rattling around inside. But upon closer examination, that's actually pieces of catalytic converter. It appears as though it has completely burned and fallen apart. More on that later. Looks cool though. Now is also a good time for a side-by-side -side comparison, and even though the one new one I got is Chinese, it looks fairly close and looks like it'll fit. Now I want this heat shield because the new one didn't come with one. So I'm going to remove the heat shield off of the old exhaust. You'll find that repeatedly seasoning it with New England spice has made these bolts completely rusted and useless. So you'll just have to grind them off. And there's the heat shield. And I'm going to try to retrofit it to the new one. And it took a decent amount of finagling, but I got it on. It's not exactly a perfect fit and I had to use new hardware. Obviously not a perfect fit at all, but probably better to have it there than not having it there. Along with this job, I've bought some replacement gasket and uh, bolts with springs to attach the rear flange, because you never know if you might break them. So to put the gasket on, you put the flat end towards the engine side and the tapered end towards the muffler side. And mounting it, you just work in reverse, starting with the middle hanger. Don't bolt it in yet. And here's some big brain time for you. Locking pliers to bring the flanges closer together because this spring part is kind of a pain in the butt. But you tighten it as far as it goes and don't worry if there's a sizable gap left there because it'll just be brought closer together as the gasket wears out. And for me, I had to put my downstream oxygen sensor back so I don't have horrible noises anymore. And so now it's test time. We're gonna get in here and see how it drives. It 
Certainly doesn't sound like ass anymore, which is a great thing. The only thing left to do is to erase those codes, and I'm going to use my blue driver to do that, which is just a OBD reader that pairs to your phone. Great little tool. So I clear the codes, and let's go on our merry way to test drive it. And why zero to 60? Because like I said, my problem was power loss. Yeah, buddy. And at zero to 60 in just under 10 seconds, looks like the problem's fixed. So, like I promised, if you don't address the root cause of why your downstream catalytic converter failed, you'll just be doing this again. And you don't really want to wind up paying for this. So first things first, most Subarus have two catalytic converters. One is right here in the front coming off of the exhaust manifold, and that's flanked by two oxygen sensors. And then there's one downstream catalytic converter right here, and that's the one I replaced. And unless you buy Chinesium like me, I mean, these things are expensive. And with a car reaching 170,000 miles like mine, that's looking an awful lot like what the car is worth. So, simply put, a catalytic converter can either fail because it's clogged or because it literally melted and got destroyed like mine. And what causes a clogging or even a destruction is either going to be running rich, um, running lean, cylinder misfires, that sort of thing. Because what happens is you create smoke that can clog up your catalytic converter. And if you're running really rich, so a lot of fuel not getting combusted, well, then what happens is the gases that have not yet combusted, they'll just keep combusting right down your exhaust pipe and there will be a lot of heat accumulation happening in your downstream catalytic converter. And that's why you might see a lot of destruction, a lot of melting going on. The causes for running rich, lean, or misfiring are numerous, but they're anything from a constricted air supply, so check your air filter, to fouled up spark plugs, to a bad ignition coil or ignition coil pack, a fouled up fuel filter, or perhaps a malfunctioning MAF sensor or some oxygen sensors. So definitely address those first before you tackle the exhaust problem, unless your car's undrivable, in which case you can just remove some oxygen sensors, which is what I did. And incidentally, that's a really simple way to diagnose which catalytic converter is failing. So if you remove the downstream oxygen sensor and your car's performance improves drastically, well, then it's going to be your downstream catalytic converter. But if nothing changes, then it's most likely going to be your primary catalytic converter in your exhaust manifold. And that's about it. I have a bunch of other videos about this topic I'll link to below. And enjoy not getting your ass handed to you by an AMC Gremlin in a drag race. Thanks for watching.